Could you give us a quick explanation of where you're from and what it is you're doing in the area that you're from? I'm from High Green. Lived in High Green for 75 years. Um, I've worked uh, as a, a youth leader. I've worked in, uh, with youth, a youth, run the youth club in High Green and Mansfield Fair Hall for 35 years for senior members and then at LEA and then I did a voluntary junior club. Um, which we did for 10 years. I packed that in when the hall was all done up again. And, um, because we know voluntary workers, and that put paid to that. Um, volunteers are really hard to find, particularly in youth work. Um, what's actually why you're here today? Uh, well, one, I was one of the founding members of the um, board and uh, helped with. Um, I forgot his name. Uh, help the guy that set it up to, to encourage people to join the board, come on as directors. And we did have a good following, and uh, it's just doing good bit, not having public meetings. But I'm just interested to see what is going to happen to the forum. Uh, it would be nice if it could go on, but again, we need more members. Yeah. How do you think the meeting's done so far? Uh, pretty good. I'm usually quite bored at these meetings, mm -hmm. honestly, um, because it's all figures and abbreviations, which we've, I've had some of that today. I think other people have found difficulties in that field, but apart from that, I think, yeah, it's been well conducted, people are responding well, and, and it seems okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We're going to film the end of the meeting, so we'll get everybody. I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell us a, a bit more about why you're here today. Okay, I'm Margaret Jackson. I work for Sheffield Primary Care Trust in the Department of Public Health. Um, in public health, people are working in enhanced public health programme areas and High Green has been identified as an enhanced public health programme area because looking at the health of people in High Green, it's significantly worse than the rest of Sheffield. So we're looking at what we can do to try and improve that, to improve life expectancy, um, and to work with different organisations to see how we can work together, because just one organisation can't do much, it's partnerships. So it's working with the GPs, with the area panel, with the forum, to see what we can do. So the reason I'm here today is that I've only just started working in High Green, and so I want to know more about what the forum's up to. Uh, uh, how do you think this meeting's gone so far today? Um, how do I think it's gone? Well, I think it's a very good opportunity for people who are on the forum to actually voice their concerns. It seems to me as though it hasn't been functioning as well as it probably could. I think looking at the aims that are set out at the beginning, they're very um, ambitious and... Ambitious and high. Yeah. yeah. Maybe thinking that you can do, do more when people have got very little time. And I think that's coming clear when people are looking at the highs and the lows. I think it's quite a useful exercise to do that mm -hmm. and to learn. Well, that's what I I'm here with Jackie and Sam. Jackie, would you be able to explain a bit more about yourself and why you're here today? Please. Um, well, I'm the manager of High Green Development Trust that is based at um, Pacers Campus in High Green. I was invited to come today just to um, help with the, with the day and, and trying to find out uh, the future for High Green Community Forum. I think High Green Development Trust has an input in, in that in the future um, because we work alongside with the forum. Um, High Green Development Trust um, provides a service to its residents on the campus. There are lots of organisations on the campus uh, like um, a disabled school and a nursery and a sports club. And um, the forum 
I believe, is the, the voice of the community, whereas Highbury Development Trust is a provider of services to the community. So the two are very well linked together. Just want to go to a bit. I just want to get better information about how you come into doing your job. Uh, a bit of background from a career point of view, isn't it? you going to do that? Well, I actually started in computer programming. So many years ago, um, I went to, to college and got a high national diploma in mass statistics and computing <coughs> and then for the, for the next X number of years I was a computer programmer um, and then became a project manager still in, uh, in IT I uh, did a lot of travelling down south and um, I was then actually made redundant um, in 2004 and I looked for a similar sort of job in IT, but there wasn't any suitable project manager jobs in this area that didn't involve travelling. And one thing I didn't want was to travel, keep travelling down the old motorway and the A1. <coughs> and I actually volunteered to work at Pace's campus initially. But when I came for the interview, there was a, a development worker vacancy um, that I decided to take on a short-term basis until I actually found myself a proper job. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, I'm still here now. Um, after about maybe nine months, um, I was uh, offered the job of campus manager. So um, this is my actually first, I've been here now sort of three years, um, but it's my first taste of the voluntary and community sector, which is totally different to computing. Yeah. How do you think the meeting's gone so far? <coughs> I think it's been very interesting. I, when, <coughs> when I was invited to come from half past nine till half past three, I wondered what on earth we were going to talk about for all that length of time. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but I think it's been interesting to start off with um, the celebrations and what went wrong because I wasn't 100% familiar with that. Um, I, I knew of some of the work that before I did, but not all of it. But I think it's now interesting that we're going on to the, the gaps um, for the hybrid area, and it was interesting to find out what Sam had said about gaps for him. Not just him, but he also I did for other old people and um, Sam knows the area pretty well. Um, so I'm hoping that some of those gaps that have been identified, uh, the forum could take up. Also, Pace's campus could perhaps be the provider of some of those services. And we might see more of Sam down at Pace's campus and his friends <laughs> <coughs> taking part in, in Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> 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 Lynn Richardson. Lynn Richardson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Louise. I'm with Airway, Lynn Richardson and Denise. Um, I just want you to explain who you are and why you're here today. Yeah, I can't believe Start with Denise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm a member of the High Green Board Forum and also a parish councillor for High Green. And we just felt as though we were losing his way a bit, and so we thought a way day to get stimulated and, you know, what, what steps forward do we go from here? And I feel it's going very good today, actually. Uh, Lynn Richardson, I'm a community regeneration officer working for the Sheffield City Council. Um, and my patch is the north of uh, Sheffield, which is um, Ecclesfield, Stocksbridge um, and Bradfield. Um, and part of my job um, is to support local community forums, um, and that's why I'm here. Um, and um, I think that 
today has been um, very informative, um, motivating, and it helps us actually get to know each other better. Um, and I think that's you know, made it you know, worth, very worthwhile. Yeah. Is, there a, sorry, is there a voice at the end of the phone, you know, we're meeting face to face, and we say, yeah, getting to know each other more and more informal on that? How did you go about your career as a, how did you go about getting into your work as a career, from a career point of view? It's not really clear. <laughs> <laughs> how did you go about getting into Tara and all that? Uh, well, I've just said I've got, uh, I had some friends who said, are you interested in coming to stand for the parish council? Luckily, I was uh, elected, and then as you got more busier, more people said, "Come and join us!" You know, come and join us. I think they only ask busy people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, um, um, I mean, well, because career-wise, it's not <coughs> to do with it. Yeah. Um, my background is almost entirely in the voluntary community sector, so mm -hmm. it's working with communities and helping them get involved in different projects within mm -hmm. their own communities. Um, and it does t often tend to be the same people, but if you join one thing, then you join another, and then you join another. And, um, and it really is, you know, um, how do you get you know, people you know, um, who are not involved in things that might potentially want to be involved in things? It, you know, sometimes it can be a bit daunting for them, um, and in particularly young people um, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm here today with Ed and Anne, and I just want you two to explain a bit more about why you're here today. Start with Ed. I'm here, I'm the chair of the Hydrogen Forum, and so I'm interested in, in getting the thing actually moving and doing something. Up to now, well, we've, we've achieved quite a lot, we've got to a stage well, we're kind of looking at each other and, and it's lost momentum and so we're quite keen uh, to get something going in the community, make things happen in the community. Um, I've used the analogy today of a, the community should be, be like a, a bee. You know, the, a bee goes round flowers looking for life, looking for, the, for nectar, looking for the good things uh, so it can feed. But in doing so, it uh, hits the pollen of the flowers and goes to other flowers and makes the other flowers grow. And so I think that's a good analogy of, of what High Green Forum should be. Something that makes the community of High Green blossom and, and grow together. Yeah. Okay, um, I actually work for the City Council as an area coordinator. Um, the area I cover is bigger than just High Green. Part of my role is actually about community voice and increasing community voice, so it's the continuous service delivery. So I'm, I'm here today keen to, to look at how we can support more community voice getting involved in, in High Green Community Forums. So I, you know, I really want to support its, its development and, and its strengthening of that voice so we can hopefully improve High Green for everybody. And how do you think the uh, meeting has gone today so far? I think it's gone very well. It's been very positive. Um, it's, it's, it's sparked off a few ideas, certainly in my head, and, and certainly things we can begin to work with. And how can we make the forward more effective? I'm quite excited by the uh, the whole idea of, of youth and age mixing together. How to do that cross pollinating? We're talking about. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, anyway, Karen. Norman and Sam, I'd just like you all to explain a bit more about why you're here today, starting with Paris. Um, well, I live in High Green and have for the last 10 years, and I helped establish a significant project in High Green as well. And when there was talk of getting a forum together about five years ago, I was interested to support that. Now the forum's been going for a little while, it's run out of money, and there's a day it's going to fold, so I'd, I'd like to see it continue, so I've put a lot of effort into it. Thank you, sure it does. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, I work in High Green, I work at the Paces Campus, which I help Karen to set up. It's, it's Karen's is a very significant community project, and it has a commitment to the project that has a commitment to the community. 
So when the forum board was set up, uh, it seemed right to offer myself to be a member of that board and do what I could. Um, I'm committed to the idea that um, local people should have voices. I'm Gold Salmon, I live in High Green. I've come to represent the youth of High Green. And then, uh, how have you come about doing what you're doing now, career wise? That's an interesting question for me, anyway. Um, I don't suppose I would have ever. Be I wouldn't have ever thought about um, getting involved in community work if it hadn't been for my daughter who has cerebral palsy. She's 27 now. And um, I was quite interested that we find a way of developing a service for her where she would actually be included in her community. And, and the service was around helping her sort of improve and get over difficulties she has through the cerebral palsy. And so that's why we established the project and realised that doing that from a community perspective would be the best approach. That's much the same for me actually, because we're both parents of young women in their, in their, you know, in their 20s who were, and we started working together with other parents many years ago really. How did you think meeting today? Oh brilliantly, absolutely brilliant. It's been really worthwhile. Um, very impressed with the way Steve's organised it. He's managed it really, really well. Pleased at the attendance. Glad that you guys are along. Um, beginning to get a bit of variety into it. Um, hopefully it's going to be a whole renewal day really to kick start the whole thing again because people, some few people have put a lot of time into trying to keep the idea of life for the last two three years. Me feeling very optimistic about the future. Well he is tired. It's only ten to three, but that's long enough really for an <coughs> It can be very, very draining. I think everyone has contributed really well. I hope, first of all, I hope that some positive stuff has come out of today. I know it seems a bit jumbled, but all the notes that I've created up here and over on the wall over there and outside, I'll gather them all together and type them up this week, I hope, uh, into something coherent, which you can then formulate into an action plan. And it'll look, look much more sensible and um, uh, rational when, when I've typed it all up. Just one thing that I was talking to Alan about something, and just one thing I wanted to share with you just at the end here. Uh, before I pass over to Ed for this uh, summation. Um, Alan was saying that uh, one of the problems with the forum, and problems in inverted commas, I don't mean this negatively, but one of the problems with the forum was that uh, they chased money. They started off life kind of chasing money so that they could deliver. Those organisations that seem to succeed are those organisations that start with nothing, think they're never going to get anything, and don't bother about money. And in some ways, I think he's absolutely right. The organisations that I work with, the six forums, they're called the Hillsborough Allerton Neighbourhood Forum, Shirley Forum, Parson Cross Forum, Local, which is Longley Forum, um, Southey and Fox Hill Forum, all, pretty much all of them, apart from two, came into existence after this SRB Objective 1 money came, up, came online about five, six, seven years ago. And when it came to an end, about a year and a half ago, the chairs and the workers all came to us and sort of went, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? You know, where's the money coming from now? What, what are you going to do for us? And we all went, well, you know, you can go and fundraise if you want to. It's up to you. You can do any, anything you like. Oh, they all panicked and didn't know what to do. But those two organisations, namely Fox Hill Forum and Pass and Cross Forum, that had existed long before SRB, already had big lottery funding and various other pots of funding and Esme Fairburn funding in place because they knew it was coming to an end and they knew they had to look after themselves. And they're the ones with four or five employees, five, a part-time finance worker, part-time admin worker, regeneration officer, manager, volunteers. And the other ones, the other forums that came into existence as a result of SRB, they've still got one worker that's funded by SOAR and when that money runs out in 2009, I think it is, they're back to square one, probably going to dissolve, and so on. It's much more important to exist because there's work that needs to be done, rather than because there's money you can tap into. And now you have the opportunity to exist because there's so much work out there that you've all recognised that needs to be done, and that we've captured on here, in all these notes. 
I just uh, one last thing before I hand over to Ed. I just wanted to come back to these few things that I noted down randomly whilst you were talking, which were quite interesting. Which are things that we haven't necessarily delved into, but they're also they also represent part of the role of the forum coordination. Very importantly, coordination of activity. You don't have to do it yourselves, but you can certainly coordinate how it's done within the community, regeneration work, uh, whatever it might be. Networking, we have touched on that since, since I wrote it down. Maintaining a network of organisations and keeping everybody informed of what's going on. When you know something that's happening, obviously you can't assume that every other agency or every other individual does, so it's good to spread the word. Sustenance, I like that word. Sustenance, I think Ed used that, sustenance in the sense that um, the forum can nurture the, the community of High Green and allow it to grow more successfully by sustaining it. Communication, obviously. Unifying, I like, as well. Bringing together those parts of the community that might, might exist as a community in themselves, the young person's community, the older person's community, um, communities of interest, the Tara as a community, council workers as a community, but unifying them. And I like the, the use of the word unifying. It's a, it's a step beyond networking. It's, it goes even further. It's about people offering mutual support as well, which is very important. And of course, it's metaphor of the forum being a bee that's cross-pollinating organisations. And I think probably elements of these things you've been doing, <coughs> but don't look, lose sight of the fact that as much as you might be able to get the buses to run differently. You might get some extra youth provision in the area. But these things are just as important. They're just as important for creating a solid, sustainable, happy community, really. And that's something for you to remember. Ed, over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, where do we go from here? So this is my obvious next question, really. Um, I think in, in some ways it, it would be wrong to make a decision now, we're going to do this, because you can uh, get all excited in, in the, the heat of the moment. Uh, for me, I don't know what you think, but I think we can, uh, a little bit of space now, okay, let's, let's get Steve's report that he says he's going to, going to write up all these things, mm -hmm. uh, and let's meet again. Mm -hmm. Next question is, who's going to meet again? Is it just going to be the seven, or are we going to invite others along to say, Oh, I'm more considered to be where we're going to get from here. What do you think? I think everybody should come again and do like a review. Yeah. You know, the notes, a real review of the day, and if anybody, I guess people then have been able to make their mind up if they want right. to be on the forum or not, mm -hmm. right. or a member or not. Okay. So is that from people present, and then perhaps at that meeting, think of our next step. I think our next step may be something like uh, another meeting to involve other people we put on that list, like the business committee and so on, is there any kind of involvement? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I haven't got my diary right in my hand, it's over there somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but normally board meetings were second Tuesday of the month, weren't they? Mm -hmm. So if we aim for something like that, in December or January? So December or January? Okay. December could be busy. Okay. There again. Personally, I'm a bit dropping January. Yeah. I'm only a one. Right, I mean, that gives you a little more space or whatever. Can I suggest Christmas is only really four weeks away? Yes. Yeah. Um, if I get these notes to you by Friday or Monday at the latest, and then you spend a couple of days reading them, you've got three weeks really. Yeah. The last week before Christmas, I know you'll be very busy, and probably yeah. most people will be. <laughs> so, fresh in early January might be ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't got my diary with me, but I would suggest perhaps uh, second Tuesday in January or something like that uh, to do that. Okay. Do if we have any sort of two meetings scheduled like that, is there anything we need to be doing in between that time? Good question. To, to move things. And I, I wondered if, from the notes, if, if we had thoughts about sort of a, mo a model board and how we progress or, or ideas, you know, to, to come probably to next week and meet after that, rather than just wait for that meeting and attend, rather to try and move things forward and come to a meeting with ideas. I don't know if uh, we, we circulate that out with the, with the notes or whatever, I don't know. It was just so that we could move on and, and perhaps in the, for the early spring we can have some, some sort of action when... Yeah. 
people ready to attend the meeting. Yeah, you know, I mean, springtime is a good time to get things going, isn't it? It's um, kind of naturally somehow things are beginning to spring back to life after the COVID. Mm -hmm. So if we could aim to launch something uh, around, well, Easter's very early this year, earliest it can be. Um, March the 23rd is Easter Sunday. Uh, as I say, it's the earliest it can be. Um, so, is that where we're going? Okay. All right. I, can we leave it there then? I, 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 further than to give a very warm thank you. Yes, thank you. Steve. Yes, <laughs> It's only nine questions, and all you have to do is circle a number. That's our clap on the turn. If you don't mind, please, please tell me. Wicked scheme! <laughs> 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 Burning hammers for it, yeah!